<laughs> What's up, good morning? What's up, good morning? Welcome to a Saturday edition of Morning Morning Scoon. And Brock. Presented by Brock. Very good. It is Morning Scone presented by Brock. The Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic. I'm going to gymnastics. And we are going to go to gymnastics today. And then go to Fresh Market. Hot dog, the day is finally here. It is, y'all. And it's also the day that LSU plays Florida State in Super Regional Baseball. Hot dog, I'm fired up. Hopefully y'all are as well. Let's say some good mornings. Uh, I'm gonna hit the share button. Encourage all of you to hit the share button as always. Uh, big, big help to us if you would share the, the uh, post. Really do appreciate that. Um, we got until a little after eight. So Drew is going back to uh, Beyond Gymnastics, a little uh, special needs gymnastics place in town. So. He and some other kiddos will get to go uh, play together and tumble and do different stuff. I'll put all the different stuff on my, my story, so if y'all are following along on my story, you'll see it. Uh, let's see, James Tyrone, Dustin Bellello, Bo Major, Cassidy Russo, Craig Sanimal, Brian Wynn, James Tyrone. Good morning, everybody. Charlie Gale, Kirk Taylor, Joey Painich, Matthew. Good morning. Rogelio. What's up? Good morning. What's up? Good morning. Jennifer Bunnell, Paul Laurent. Brian Wynn, Matthew Denicola, Everett Email, Blake Lafino. What's up, everybody? Golly, good morning. I don't know what that is, Blake, but uh, shout out. Bob Kubrick, hey, Dad, good morning, Josh. Uh, Jeff Bertucci. Matthew Denicola, what do you think about the order of the pitching rotation? I think it's perfect. It's uh, exactly what he should do. Um, you want your best guy going in game one. And if you feel like that's Cole Henry, that's absolutely what you do. Uh, and there's kind of this this thing where you wonder, yeah, okay, but if he's your best guy, do you burn him game one? Because what if you Dad show. You can't play scared like that. Dad show. Catherine video. Catherine videos. You will see Catherine videos later. Um, it's absolutely what you do. Uh, I, I'll keep pointing to it because there's a lot of time. I also really had a... Well, no! No! Basically 2015. With uh, with nine and seventeen with nine. What? Can, oh, are you doing the Brenda? Huh? 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 I'd like to solve. We're gonna do it then. My happy place. My happy place. <laughs> the things, the things I did. Uh, you watching Liquid on Mommy's phone? <laughs> Can I kiss? Okay. okay. Everybody say, that's everybody say O'Toole's. Everybody say. I'm going to Albertson's. Everybody say I'm going to Albertson's. I thought it's everybody say O'Toole's. Five, four, three, two, one. That was so good. Aw, thank you. I love the pitching rotation. Cole Henry first is perfect. Uh, you pitch your best guy. You talk Catherine videos. Remember when uh, LSU played Oklahoma and it was Nola against Jonathan Gray? What if Nola had lost to Jonathan Gray? Then you burned your best arm on front. Well, that's just what you do, man. You go with your best guy game one against their best. You're going to have to beat aces as it is. So you go best on best. You try to win it. What I love about where LSU is now I think when right, Cole Henry is absolutely your ace. Same said for uh, Florida State and Drew Parrish, who's going to go today. Drew Parrish, though, is only 8-5 and five on the season with an ERA over 5. But he's a lefty, throws him in 90s, and when he's on, he's awesome. When he's not, maybe a good comp. You know a good comp for the season uh, Parrish said would be like Zach Hess? Strikeout numbers are awesome. The stuff is undeniable. 
when he's good, he's really good. When he's not, it can go bad. Um, and then C.J. Van Eyck is their number two. And actually, that kind of compares to Landon Marshall. I think the two teams right now are almost mirror images. Teams that have had their struggles. LSU played a much more difficult schedule coming through the SEC. But records are comparable. Uh, you have two starting pitchers that have undeniable stuff. Um, Marceau, over the last month or so, has been LSU's most consistent pitcher. Same for Van Eyck uh, at Florida State Game 2 guy. Last seven starts, 7-0 with a 2 8 ERA. Um, he's been awesome. He's lowered his, his ERA two runs since April. He's gone from an ERA almost at six to an ERA in the threes. So you, got two, so you got two teams that are very similar, but I love that you got Henry game one because if he's your ace, go with him. And I also love that Marceau's in game two because he's your most been your most consistent pitcher. And if you have a chance to either end the Super Regional or, or salvage your season if you lose game one, I love the fact that you got your who's been your most consistent pitcher going in game two. So I like it. I think Maneri did exactly the right thing. And yesterday we talked about it, that if it went to game three, I didn't feel great about it because uh, Florida State, the emotion, playing for Mike Martin, his final season, all that stuff. I think I've changed my mind on that. The more I've looked at that matchup, the potential game three matchup, with Eric Walker on the bump, um, and the fact that LSU would be facing uh, uh, a a righty that isn't overpowering with strikeout stuff, and then you look at the bullpens too. I think LSU has more quality arms in the bullpen than Florida State at this point. I I think if it goes to a game three, LSU would win it. The other thing that I'll say is when you look at LSU this season since they started conference play, they only swept one series. Um, but it was Kentucky. It was the first SEC series. They didn't sweep another one the rest of the, the, rest of the year. So I think it's unrealistic to think LSU is going to go just cakewalk because they just haven't done it this year. That's not, um, that's not been their MO. Typically, they've split games one and two and found a way to win the series by winning game three. More often than not, that's, that's what happened. Uh, no, they lost some series at Georgia. They won game one and then lost games two and three. You know, but uh, they lost the series to Ole Miss, which was devastating. But uh, if you remember the Sunday game, well, they, they rallied with the back-to-back-to-back homers and lost the next years. But um, you know, Florida, they lost game one, came back and won games two and three. So, you know, I think, I think LSU, I think it's going to go three now. I, I wouldn't have said that yesterday because I wasn't super pumped about that possibility. But I also just look at LSU and what they've been this year. And they haven't been a team that's just overpowered people. So I think they'll probably split the first two in whatever order. Um, and uh, and win it on Monday. All right, David Hawes, good morning from Houston. Jackie Caruso, Derek Maness, good morning. Kevin Harrell, Ted Nixon, Ben Giat, Trivia Carter, Trey Daigle, what's up? Um, Gail is what... Mike Martin said about Alec Box. I didn't see that. Gale or Gale? What a G A L E? I don't know what that is, man. All right. I'm missing it, Matthew. It's just. And go yeah. to JJ's. Go to JJ's house. We're going to go to JJ's house next week. We're going to go tonight. We'll go to Mimi's house and see Mimi and Papa and JJ and Jeff and Liv and So and Eli and Reese and Roro and James. Yay, yeah. Yay, try and you'll see the truck. Yes, you will. Mario Colada, good morning. Uh, Blake Rafina, Matt, go see the video. Jacques, you say share. It's what Mike Martin said. We said like golly. Okay. Oh, like go- golly. Is that is that what you're saying? Like golly, like golly, G O L L Y. I didn't see. It. I'll go look at Jacques Twitter though. I love you. He just like contorts my hand. He grabs my hand. Just starts like tugging on all my fingers. And... Mommy. Yips on mommy's phone. Yeah, you can see lips on mommy's phone. Can you have a kiss again? Nope. Oh, you are? Kiss? Kiss? Okay, just your head. That's fine. All right, Chipper Noel, good morning. Um, let's 
see. Get to y'all's questions if you got them. Fire away. I think, by the way, I also think that Erica at some point might come through. So we may get a Q and A for Erica a little later. You know what I mean? Y'all might look into that today on the Saturday. Uh, let's see. Greg Daigle. Good morning. Great advice on picking up a bottle of Calendra's Elijah Craig Barrett. I guess you got to go get a macaroon okay. now. <laughs> go to press morning. I, I think uh, Les Amis, the, uh, uh, the Les Amis Bake Shop, probably is going to set a record. Uh, they're going to have a record month for macaron, ma macarons. I was, and I was, hey, no, 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 no. He laughs like that when I cover his mouth. You can't come at me being a joker. Elmo. Well, go watch Elmo. Uh, yeah, Greg. Elijah Craig. Uh, if you get the Calandro's Barrel Pick of Elijah Craig, best 27, 29 bucks you'll ever spend on whiskey. Catherine yeah. videos. Um, and then Les Amis Bake Shop on Corsi. Uh, near Sherwood. I'll shout them out. Uh, they, they did the... Um, they did the, the macarons for uh, for the Les Miles party, the Hall of Fame party uh, on Wednesday that we were at. Me and Terry just they were amazing. So I went and got him a uh, went and got him a dozen yesterday, and so I gave it to him on air. It's a little little fun bit, uh, and he ate the whole box. <laughs> really good, man. It was crazy. I don't know that I'm sure I had a macaron at some point in my life, like. You're at a wedding or a reception, and you go to the dessert table, and it's just like the little cookie grab. Well, I'm sure I had them. I just don't remember eating one, but those were amazing. Let's see. Brian Wynn, a little concerned about Florida State's lefty pitchers. Hope we aren't overlooking the rules. Expecting an automatic birthday. Uh, Catherine videos. I'm with you, Brian. Um, the, the thing about it is beep, beep, beep. The shh. Um, so Brian, I'm with you on, on the lefty, right? LSU struggle with lefties, left handed dominant lineup. The thing I'll tell you that what that I think will help is since all of that shh, the thing I'll tell you with the lefties if you remember oh, shh, shh, I just called him in there. oh no hey drug station hey. <laughs> Please stop. Okay. Shh, shh. Yeah, listen, listen, listen. I'm gonna fuss with you. Can see all daddy's life. We're not gonna fuss. What? What do you do? What's up? Come on and. What? Happy You can see Catherine videos. Okay. All right. Go see Emma. Go see Emma. Um, so, the two things about the left hand pitching. Number one, obviously, left hand dominant lineup struggled against lefties early in the season. But remember, those lefties, I'll keep running, the lefties LSU was facing that they struggled with were Zach Thompson, John Doxakis, Asa Lacey, Ethan Small. You were facing dominant left-handed pitching guys that went in the first and second round of the draft. Like that, and that was at a time where LSU was struggling to hit. They were certainly were struggling to hit one through nine, and they were facing dominant lefties. The kid they're going to face today, Drew Parrish, has great stuff undeniably. But I will say that LSU's two things. Number one, Drew Parrish has been a low hit or miss. He is a dominant lefty, but when his stuff isn't great, it's not great. 
and LSU is hitting the ball now. Like that's that's also the biggest difference between LSU now and what they were in mid March, early mid March. Then you knew you had Smith, Watson, Duplantis, Cabrera, and Reed was starting to come along. Everybody else in the lineup was it was like a black hole. Now, Beloso has been a stud. Broussard's hitting 400 in postseason play. Gars is hitting almost 500 over his last 20 games. So you look up and down the lineup, and now you've got more production, one through eight. Uh, so I, I get it, and I think you know we were conditioned to think, oh gosh, lefty left-hand dominant lineup's not going to go well, and maybe today won't go well. But I think at the time it was the combination of the quality of left-handed pitching and the fact that LSU's offense just wasn't swinging the bats well. Now they're swinging the bats well. I, I think it, it's a little bit of a different story. Uh, Mark Demlin, good morning. Melanie Chittister, good morning. Adam Cotrere, Craig Schilling, what's up? Maurice Coleman, David Hawes. Has LSU released their lineup for today? What do you expect it'll be? Uh, they have not. They usually post the lineup you know, about an hour or so before first pitch. I expect it'll be exactly what it's been. Um, I think you'll have Reed at first uh, and Hughes at third and everything else is the same. Bruce Hart at second, Garza catching. You know, I mean, the outfield's obviously been the same all year, but... Uh, I, I fully expect it. Um, Travis McGraw, Mike Gravlock, Terry Richard, Lloyd Prophet, good morning. Yeah, I think, um, yeah. And we had a good conversation about this yesterday on, on AFR with Terrio about, you know, what you do with the lineup. And, you know, he, and I, I was talking about how you, Maneri's gonna, gonna put Lee Fusion in third to have the glove. And, we were talking about how that's unconventional, and he's right. I mean, typically the premium defensive positions where you'd sacrifice a bat for a glove are catcher, short, and center. Premium defensive positions. And that's what you've seen Maneri do at times with Stevenson, Austin Nola, Papierski, where they they put a guy in who was a really good defensive player who wasn't swinging the bat very well. Now, Pat, late in his career, had that little power surge. He had double-digit homers in his last year. And Austin Nola, of course, became a great player. I'm talking about as a freshman. Same with Stevenson, when those two were freshmen. Um, but I, uh, I really think um, Maneri's going to stick with, with Hughes at third because he knows one through eight he's hitting, and he can sacrifice that one bat. Earlier in the year where it was a revolving door where they were trying Bianco at first, and they remember they tried D.H. Willis and Willis at first, and they tried... They Reed settled in a third to have the bat, and then they were rotating Bruce Hart Hughes in second, and they tried to do God second, and he came back. That's because they weren't hitting, and they were looking for offense. Now that you're hitting, and you can, he, I'm sure he feels like I'd rather have the bat, like, especially in a game like today, you know, with, with Parrish and Henry, what if this is a, a two to one game? Like, you, and your scoring opportunities may be limited, and so you need to limit theirs as well. Okay. So, you need to limit their scoring after you I think that's what he's going to do. I think he's going to say he's the third. Uh, unless if he gets a gut feeling and looks at, and looks at somebody, maybe looks at, um, uh, he looks at somebody like, um, Bianco at third. Um, he DH below, so would read it first. I mean, that's that's maybe his other option. Uh, Anthony Gugliusa, good morning. Larry Daigle, Joey Graff, Adam Penny, Andrew Bear. Uh, oh, that's awesome. Are you kidding me? Adam Penny said, Congrats to Ryan Eads getting called up to the show. No, what, dude, we were talking about that yesterday. Hey, what's the matter? Somebody asked yesterday. On AFR, on the Ask Ryan, who's the next LSU Tiger to get called up for the pros? Go to gymnastics. Go to gymnastics. And we talked about uh, we talked about Kramer and Austin Nola, both in AAA right now, probably get, get an opportunity. Um, and and we talked about Eads. And Tara's like, Eads is throwing it well right now. Like he's 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 got a real shot. That's you no, know, I hadn't seen him. That's great news, man. Good good for him. But Eads was a guy who who here had awesome stuff. But I remember the thing with him was he net well, two things. And one, his face always got really red when he pitched. Cat 
bathroom videos. Um, the other thing is he never had a clean in He worked out of trouble a lot, but he never had a one, two, three. It was just, he'd walk a guy, he'd hit a guy, get the double play and the strikeout. Just, he never had a clean inning, but he made it work somehow. Mm. Okay, Bubba. Uh, Brian would ask Eric if she'd always fun every time how Hughes comes to bat regardless of the number of outs or base runners. Um, that's not going to happen. And, and she'll say no because she hates Monty. She, she, does, she gets it. It's actually really good because... Frog, where's your frog? Drew, where's your frog? Rib, that's what the frog says. Where is your frog? Is it right there? Can you get it? Okay. Okay. Oh, all done. Drew made a happy plate. Drew made a happy plate. Hey, my Drew. Who says, hey, my Drew? Barbara. Barbara says, hey, my Drew. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. I can get back to your, your go. Kenny Bergeron, good morning. Oh, that one. That sorry. Uh, Jackie Caruso, Vandy got smoked against Duke. Not a good look for the SEC. I saw that. Like 18 to 5. Y'all know, oh, all right. Quick point to make here. Okay? Just for those that, because some of you watching feel this For those of you that hate Venetri and these things and basically the success because of the program, yada, yada, yada. Do you realize how much talent Tim Corbin has had at Vanderbilt. Mm -hmm. What? Do you realize, like, what? the number of first round what? picks and number what? of Swanson first overall, like the number, the, the amount what? of talent. What? The amount of talent. Elevator on mommy's phone. Elevator on mommy's phone. Now he's got his national title, <laughs> but the amount of time that they lost in regional and, and super regional play at home is staggering, considering the talent. And yesterday, the biggest odds on favorite in Vegas in all the Super Regional games yesterday was Vandy. And they lost. Bless you. Bless you. That's why people with kids are sick all the time. Um, they lost 18 to 5. I mean, you got curb stomped yesterday. Uh, I'm just saying, man. He's had a ton of talent that won a lot of games, but. Off it. Off it. Okay. Um, all we can hope for is that the super environment doesn't get to the freshman pitchers. Oh, I don't think that's. Hi. What? I don't think that'll happen, man. You know what, honestly, Mike, it, and, and I. I understand. I do understand the point, but at this point in the season, those guys have been in so many tough situations, and and they are stoic. Like Henry and Marceau are. That's kind of their mo. Um, I don't. I don't think that's. I just more so wonder. Does Florida State offensively just get off like they did against? It's really good pitchers from Georgia. And go to Albertsons to see Christie. I love you, Drew. You're my favorite. Okay, we'll see you later. Uh, let's see, Anthony. So would Thrifty Liquor carry that stuff up here in Shreveport because we don't have Calandros and Tower of the North? <laughs> um, so, Anthony, if you're looking for a barrel pick, something to keep in mind: a barrel pick is a it's a single barrel. So, like that particular uh, retailer will go to. So, it, in this case, it would be Thrifty Liquor. Thrifty Liquor would go to the Elijah Craig Distillery and pick a barrel that would be theirs. Uh, sometimes they can finish it a certain way or, or age it a little longer, or pick certain characteristics like um, uh, Maker's Mark, you can go do a barrel pick where you get to pick the different staves that you put in there to give it a certain texture 
whenever it's it's before it's, it's bottled. Um, anyway, and then they put a label that it's a barrel pick, so it's a single barrel. It's not it's not a blend. It's not a whole bunch of barrels all thrown into this big vat and then bottled that way. It's one barrel, so you get the unique texture and flavor of that that individual barrel. Um, and then it's labeled as a as a barrel pick. So what, what uh, the person earlier was talking about was a Calandro's barrel pick. So you have to go to your store and see if they have barrel picks. If not, that's cool. But even still, you could still find um, Elijah Craig's small batch, and that's 27, 29 bucks, right around there, 30 bucks, right around there, and that's amazing. It's for, for me, if you're gonna go, if you wanna spend 25, 30 bucks on a bottle of whiskey, that's good quality, that's, that's the one to get. Now if you wanna step up into the $40 range and beyond, we can start having conversations, but the one to, to do would be, would be Elijah Craig. All right, let's see, Chad Dupuy, good morning. David Hawes, ask E-Rock, how many macaroons will Matt receive from Fox? Eric, let's go ask. I can't put the camera on because I think she's getting dressed. We're uh, we're getting ready for uh, Drew's, Drew's has gymnastics today at Beyond Gymnastics. Bobby, shout out to Brock, Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic. Hey, babe. Yeah. You, you're not on? Oh you're, you're not on? <laughs> you're not on. I'm never going to put you on camera without knowing. Okay. And I was like, yeah, I think she's getting dressed, blah, blah, They said, ask E-Rock, how many macaroons will, fa- will Matt get for Father's Day? How many what? The macaroons. Oh, are going to go get you some? I don't know. You're going to get um, one dozen. I'm going to get one dozen macaroons. No, and, you might, I don't know. And then the other question was, was, <laughs> should... The other ask Eric was should LSU bunt Hal Hughes every time he comes up, even regardless of number of people on base and outs. Bunting is just stupid. Bunting I is stupid. Bunting, I don't know if it's like fake baseball, like fake news kind of. Well, hi. Bunting is fake baseball, like fake news. So there you go. There's your answers. Shout out to Brock, Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic, five locations in the Greater Baton Rouge area. They are open on weekends as well, folks. So, if you're out about this weekend, maybe kids playing a baseball tournament, takes one off the forearm, you need to go get that thing x-rayed. MRI and x-ray. After hours. Brock. Uh, let's see. Rachel Williamson, good morning. Val Browning, Kevin Toller, good morning. Got my cold brew and morning scum. Let's go. Drinking beer at 7.56 a.m. God bless, Kevin. Dale Broussard, Brian Ashcraft, good morning, Cheryl Wilkes. Brian, good looking out on the uh, Spartan Mosquito Eradicator. Appreciate the tweet. Y'all go, if you're in Baton Rouge, go to Clegg's, get you a Spartan Mosquito Eradicator. Uh, Matthew Denicola, I'll be there all three games. Uh, let's see, Charles Rees. With that best you throw in a lefty with an error around five, what gives LSU's and lefties problems? Or the, or the bad ERA? What gives LSU lefty problems or the bad ERA? I don't quite follow the question, Charles. We did talk about it a little bit ago. And the thing, basically the bottom line of Drew Parrish today, Let's lefty. Let's go back to macaroons. Because it's, okay, we're back to macaroons. Because you tell me, like, I can't buy you that kind of stuff. You don't want to eat like that. Okay. So now am I supposed to get you sweets? Or no? Like now it's just the, it was an Ask E-Rock question. Yeah, but I think you might well, Did you hear yesterday on the show oh, about Ryan? Did you say I got Ryan a dozen macaroons? I saw that. It was very nice. Did you think that was nice? That was very sweet. Yeah. It was only because you wanted one. Mm-mm. Yeah. I wanted the bit on radio. Oh, okay. But um, I did eat one. I know you said that. So, if, do I get macaroons? Uh, or not? Because you know like, Or then you say no, but you really mean yes. Yeah, no, I'm not, I don't want to do it because I don't need to eat a dozen of those at all. But, so, but you know, they, they do, that place does make cheesecake. And I'm kind of curious now. So is that what you want? I don't know. For what? Father's Day. Uh, what are we doing for Father's Day? Well, no one's responding. I know. <laughs> I don't really know. Um, I, we need to have a serious discussion if you want dessert or not. And don't, well, don't having, no mind games of like, no, I don't want anything, but I really well, do. Well, if we're having people over, we should have some kind of dessert. We were. We were having like ice cream, pops, ice cream treats out by the pool. Oh, uh, ice cream treats by the pool. But if you want like a real dessert, I need to know that. Oh, uh, maybe a piece of cheesecake and a macaroon from there. But if we're having people, I can't get one. Why well, worry about them? I'll eat it later. What if I leave? And a cold cheesecake for everybody? No, 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 no. Just a slice of cheesecake for me. 
so no one gets real dessert but you. Well, you just, I just asked if we're doing that, and you're like, no, we're going to have popsicles while I thought that, but then you were like, you want a real dessert. But I said I'll leave when they leave. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Mario Kalan, beat the Nulls. Nulls, yes. Beat the Nulls. Also, on a different note, thought on Toronto up 3-1, does this end the Warriors run? Is KD gone? So, Charles, I did pick Toronto in six. Um, I regretted that and thought I should have changed it to seven because I realized only after the fact that Toronto had home court, and so game six was going to be in uh, Oracle. Now they may not get there. Uh, either way, I think my pick of Toronto was going to work. Um, the bottom line is Golden State without Kevin Durant is a different team. I mean, he's maybe the best player in, in the league. And even with Steph scoring 47 a couple of nights ago, still lost. I watched last night. I mean, Kyle Lowry's a stud. Even when he's not scoring, he affects the game in so many ways. Kawhi is just... Kawhi just took over that game. Um, they're awesome, man. Good for Toronto. Like they're they're up three to one. I mean, we saw Golden State up three to one and lose to Cleveland. Um, we saw OKC up three to one on Golden State in the, uh, the conference finals a few years back. Came back and won. So, um, so definitely not over, especially if KD comes back. But let's see. Let's see. Brian Ashcraft. The Michigan pitcher was straight dealing last night. Now he pitches through race versus Pressure for I didn't watch that game. So Michigan beat UCLA? That's potent. Impressive. Hi. Daddy people. Daddy people, yeah, tag team, back again, party up, party up, and let's begin. Daddy people. Daddy what? Daddy panda. Daddy panda? I think, I don't know what he said. Uh, let's see, Bruce Parker, good morning. Jonathan Foru, good morning. Uh, Craig Duga, good morning. Jesse Mates, good morning. Lenny Moss, what's up? What? Ralphie and Mommy. You can watch Ralphie and Mommy's car. Very good. You can watch Ralphie and Mommy's car. One more reminder. If y'all would hit the share button, that would be... Oh, oh, Brian would like the video you share. I wish you would all share. That'd be wonderful. It used to let me know if you shared, so I could thank you. And go to gymnastics. We are. Let's see... Drew's doing voiceover work this morning. Craig Duga, the dates for these premier LSU basketball away games are just making me crazy. No, so Craig, you used it wrong. You used it wrong. You can't, that's like saying, like, Jamaica me crazy is you're making me crazy. Hi. So if I'm, if you're using hi. it. Hi. Ralphie on mommy's phone. Ralphie on mommy's phone. So the way you did it, it would read like this. The dates for these premier LSU basketball game away games are you're making me crazy. You did it wrong. So it's like Jamaica me crazy is like Jamaican me crazy. Like that's how you do it. Like you're making me crazy. Like out like this, Craig. Craig, you Craig, Jamaican me crazy with all your bunt talk. That's how you would use it. So you did it wrong. See? Do better, bro. Craig Schilling, considering Vandy can hand out full scholarships, he has underperformed as a coach. I'm not going to say he's under he's underperformed because your job is get is get your roster together, put him in position to win. It's very hard to win. Um, I think that's the bigger point. Is it's very hard to win. It's as a coach, you can recruit, you can train your guys, you can put your roster together, and you can manage a game and put guys in certain situations, but you lose 18-5 to five yesterday, do you stink? I mean, is, your, is your team no good? I mean, they just didn't perform yesterday, man. It's like, you can't go into the batter's box and 
It's not like in football where like you just didn't recruit enough linemen and you couldn't stop the run against that team. It's not like you were out skiing. They just ran over you. They're just better than you. It's different in baseball. It's like, I mean, Vanderbilt's got enough guys, to, pitchers to get guys out, and they got enough hitters to, to get base hits. It just didn't yesterday. You know? Tony Crochet, uh, is Christy single? Asking for my brother. Oh, Christy from, uh, from, from Albertson. I, I don't think so, no. Uh, the cashier that Drew loves. No. Uh, Carl the Cat, what's up, man? Blake DeVillier, just joking, but Duke, 18 to 5 over Randy for show. Joey Graff, will Carl the Cat be at the box today? Better, I'm sure. Taylor Calandro, what's up, dude? Bourbon Society of Baton Rouge, Matt schooling us on baseball and whiskey this morning. morning. Hey, that's every day, man. That's, uh, that's how we roll here. Caleb Clark, what's going on? D. Fife Schwest, good morning. I keep saying, shoot my pool with mommy. And he goes, shoot my pool with papa. Oh. I'm like, no, you're going to swim with mommy. He said, papa. Papa. You don't want to swim with You don't want to swim with You want to swim with papa. Let's see. Kevin told Erica Lustrum. <laughs> oh, because she said uh, fake news. Uh, hey, Erica. Erica. Hey, babe. Erica. Um, let's see. Derek Roussel, good morning. Ooh, let me do like five more minutes, y'all. Oh. Mike Gravois, Bullet, Bourbon, and Blanton's. Look, man, I like Blanton's. I'm not going to tell you Blanton's is, is bad. It's not. It's good. The problem with Blanton's is it's just overrated. I, I've got 100 bottles of whiskey in my house, and Blanton's might be like the 20th best thing I have. It's just, it's good. Don't get me wrong. It's good. It's just, it got popular very quick. There's a novelty associated with it because of the horse toppers, and it's affordable. So you have something that's good, affordable, and has a novelty that makes it a collector's item, which increases the demand for it. And that's just, it's, it's created this, this whole life for it, but it's not, it's not, I tell you what, I've got a bottle of Henry McKenna 10 year right there. I take that over blends. I've got Calandra's old elf barrel pick. I take that over blends. I, my Kentucky owl 11 year rye, I absolutely take. I have my Thomas Handy, my Whistle Pig Boss Hog, my Weller 12, Weller Antique. I mean, a, any of our rhetorics back there. I mean. Anyway, blends blends is good, man. I'm not trying to say that it's not. It's just it's just so it's just overrated because it got super duper popular and hyped, and it, that's kind of the anyway. Uh, Kevin Tuller, cold brew is coffee. Why are you drinking your coffee cold, man? You can't say like if someone says to me, "I'm having a cold brew," I'm thinking you're having a beer. If you say I'm having like you know. A, a hot brew this morning? Okay, then I'm thinking you brewed up a cup of coffee. But you can't say cold brew and think I'm talking. Think you're talking about coffee. Jonathan Pecoraro is Henry on a strict pitch count. Any word? No pitch count, man. Um, 86 last week or 85 last week, and they're taking the handcuffs off, man. Let him go. Mark Allen. Good morning, Brian Ash. Hey, someone said you love Trump because you said uh, fake news. Did you even vote? Yeah, I did. You did vote? Yeah. Brian Ashcraft, good morning. You saw someone was throwing a no-no in AAA and someone laid down a bunt to break it up. I did. That was Ontario did that in Kick Rocks. I actually said Kick Rocks to the people that were cracking on that guy because your job is to get on base, so go get on base. Which I agree, and I'm cool with bunting for a hit. I'm cool with bunting for a hit. I'm cool with, uh, with bunting to score a run. I've talked about that before. If someone has the shift against you and... Your options are hit into the shift or drop a bunt down the third base line and take your base. Take your base, bro. I'm not okay with ever giving up an out, ever. 
Uh, and people say, what about sack fly? You're not giving up an out. You're swinging away. Now, if in the course of getting that out, it's productive, you score a run, great. But I'm not saying give yourself up. Uh, Joey Graff, good morning. Joe Jubal, what's up, my dude? How Jubin, Ryan Dozar. What's up, Ryan Dozar? I want a slice of cheesecake. Joe Jubal, I want some cheesecake. See, we got talking about cheesecake. <laughs> Dustin Cleveland, what's up? Craig Schilling, you yeah. pulling the married man mind question. Don't say you don't. But you really do want something. True. That's real life, Matt. Well, thank you, Jeff. Jeff Bertucci. Mike Edwards, she must be related to my wife. <laughs> Dessert Gate is taking over more. Scone. What? Mommy Home Depot. Mommy Home Depot. Okay. Craig Duga, Red Velvet Chocolate Chip Bunt Cakes. Oh, if you go to Nothing Bunt Cakes, those are legit. That Red Velvet, I'll get down with that. Hey, Drew, 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 Drew. Uh, Derek Maness, what style cheesecake you prefer, Scout? I'll tell you what. I like whipped cheesecake, by the way. Um, Rafino's cheesecake, in my opinion, is the best in Baton Rouge. If you get Rafino's cheesecake with the raspberry drizzle, Rufino's Cheesecake. Incredible. Incredible. Rufino's Cheesecake. Um, Craig, do you guys never claim to be a philanthropist, Matt? Uh, Mark Allen, after listening to Joe Brady talk shop at the LHSCA convention the other day, I walked away with the feeling Racing McMath will have a big year. Dude, they love Racing McMath, there's no doubt. My question is, where does he fit, right? Because if you got um, Jefferson back, Sullivan back, uh, Chase, Marshall, Anderson, Dylan, McMath is seven. And go Alberts. And go Even if you leapfrog some of those guys. And go Alberts. And go to Fresh Market. Kyle Hall Power, Mike Kreischer, good morning. Just joining, hope I didn't miss this. What are your thoughts on the best batting lineup going forward? I think they're going to stick with it. We did talk about it. I think it's exactly what, they're, what they've been doing they're going to stick with. Uh, and I'm, I'm good with it. I know the question is about Hal Hughes. And Maneri's going to stick with the glove at third. And I'm okay with that because you don't have a better option. If you had an option of someone who was absolutely hitting the baseball consistently, okay. If, if Bianco were a 310 hitter, or if Duga were hitting, you know, 290, or if, um, you know, if Willis were batting 315, you put Willis at first and Reed back at third, you know, okay, you don't have that guy. You have a t guys who at times have been streaky, but the thing that I know that's a, def that's a definite is Hughes is going to play good third base. So I'll take the glove. Because, because you've got eight other guys in the lineup that can hit. Uh, Dale Broussard, Erica needs to be on camera. There's no way that's happening. She's in a row. She just got the bat. I love how your people like me more than you now. They love Drew too. Uh, she said, I love how your people Drew love me more than you. Me than you. Huh? Drew first, then me then you. Let's not forget the reason they're watching is because they follow my Facebook page, all right? So forget that. Johnny Clark, Ben Sherville, good morning. James McGee, cold brew millennials. Oh, that's true, must be. Yeah, go get that iced coffee or whatever. Jonathan Fulru, completely agree with you, Matt. The can of beats Blanton's for me. Drink Rowan's Creek last night. I'm putting that over Blanton's along with several other bottles in my cabinet. Rowan's Creek is good. Um, uh, I don't know Rowan's Creek. I don't know his mill. I mean, I ain't showed you on my cabinet lately. Uh, Elmer T. Lee, I take I got that. I'll take that over Blanton's. Midwinter Night's Dram, take that over Blanton's. Got my High West Rendezvous Rye, take that over Blanton's. Yippee Kaye, take that over Blanton's. I mean, boy, bro. Anyway. Uh, let's see. Kevin told him, don't knock it until you try it. 
when you brew coffee, 75% of the flavor leaves it. True coffee flavor can only be cannot found with the cold brew process. Um, yeah, I'm good. I want hot coffee in the morning. But thank you. Uh, if I want cold coffee, I would go to Starbucks and get a frappuccino, whatever thing, which I don't feel like spending six bucks for coffee. I'm good. Craig Duga, how about Sha'Carri Richardson? Oh, I saw that. Sprinter? Mm, golly. I wish I was fast. Uh, Edward Cooper, good morning. Again, another shout out to Brock. Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic, for those who just joined us here. They are uh, tagged in this post. So if you could like the uh, Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic page, that would be awesome. Appreciate y'all. The Creole Cream Cheese Cake is really good. That's from Mark Allen. Uh, Karen Pesson, good morning. Jason Souls, hot coffee, cold beer, America. Equals America. And good, it probably is terrific, just never had it. Michael O'Regan, good morning. Oh, Craig Duga, I start my morning shotgunning those cold coffee energy drinks, good stuff. I can't do that, man. You know what I do? I drink a five hour energy every day. I don't know how AFR, I've been asking our salespeople this for years. How am I not sponsored by five hour energy? Whoever the local distributor is for five hour energy should absolutely have like rows of five hour energy on the desk at AFR. Like, I, for nine years of my life, as long as I've been doing the show, every day before the show, I take a five-hour energy. That's not true because there was a brief time where we were sponsored by Zions, the energy drink, which is really good. So they give me the energy drinks, and I drink one on the air as we started the show. But other than that, every other day, I've had, I do a five-hour energy. So I can go buy those. I'm like, why wouldn't we just trade it? I'd do the shot on the air. As I, as I started every show, that would be like a thing I did. Anyway. So if you know whoever distributes Five Hour Energy in Baton Rouge or Louisiana, come on, like, let's 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 do a deal. Let's do a deal. Uh, let's see, Jason Sewell's Drew is the boss. Michael Moore, good morning. Derek Maness, this is turning into the Scone Variety Hour. Kind of is. Kind of always been the mm -hmm. uh, Mad Dog Twenty Twenty Ever Plans. Get out of here, bro. <laughs> Eric Huval, Brady Beacom, Michael O'Regan. Disappointed it's not a night game today. Just doesn't feel like Super Regional Baseball at 2 p.m. Um, hey, man, while I understand your point, um, I'd go back and point out when LSU played UCLA in 2000, day game on a Saturday, uh, which LSU won, by the way, uh, when they punched their ticket to Omaha in 04 against a and day game, I think Baylor was a night game in 03. Eight, uh, eight against Irvine. The first two games of that Super Regional were day games, and the Monday was at night. Uh, 09, Rice was at, it was at night. Stony Brook, Stony Brook was day, then got rain delayed. It played the, you finished the first game, played game two during the day, then game three was a night game. Okay. 13, I don't remember I when they wrapped up against um, okay. Oklahoma. Game one against Oklahoma was, no, it was, 13 was both nights. 14 they didn't make supers. 15, 15 that was Lang at night against Rice. 16 they lost to Coastal. 17, oh, 17 was, was Mississippi State. Um, that was the one I went to the wee, the wee hours of the, of the morning because of the rain delays. Uh, so there, there have been, there have been day and nights, you know. Um, I, just go play. You know, it, when you go to Omaha, you very well could be playing day games. It's, it's tournament baseball. You can play at 9 in the morning, you can play at 9 at night. I mean, just go play. I mean, I get you for the fans' sake. I, abso I absolutely agree with you, man. I just, you know, go just go. It, that's not an excuse. You just got to go win. Uh, Charles Reeves, my question about Florida State throwing a lefty, was his high ERA, will, LS, will LSU's lefty struggle, who has the advantage? LSU against bad ERA or FSU throwing a lefty? Oh, okay, so we talked we talk about that a bunch today. So their lefty, Drew Parrish, really good stuff. Don't be fooled by the ERA. His stuff is awesome. He's got a he's got like 112 strikeouts in 81 innings. He's got great strikeout stuff. When he's not on, though, he's a bit wild. Go to gymnastics. And then go to gymnastics. 
And go to JJ's and house. And see Mimi and And see Mimi and Popo. I, I like LSU's bats. I don't think the, the lefty conversation is as legit as it was earlier in the year when LSU wasn't hitting and they were facing dominant lefties like Doxakis and Small and Lacey and Zach Thompson. What? Okay, we got to wrap this up, dude. It is 820. We're leaving here in 15 minutes to go to Genesis. Um... <laughs> Hey. Hey. Uh, Charles. Hey, hey, hey. Go, go watch Elmo. Come on, we're going to go watch Elmo. We're going to go watch Elmo. Daddy's almost done. I'm trying to finish that show. I'm down with the last two comments. Let's see. Uh... Charles, do you feel more confident tonight against Florida State's pitching it tomorrow against their ace? Remember, Charles, tomorrow CJ Van Eck, uh, Van Eck, you say Van Eck, it's E Y V A N E Y K. Parrish is is their ace. Van Van Eyck has just been hot of late. Uh, his ERA was near six until April, and he's lowered his ERA by two full runs since then. He's seven and zero in his last seven starts. So it's almost one of those things like like Marceau. Marceau has been LSU's best pitcher of late. I don't know that you consider him their ace, right? I mean, it's it's it, the two the two teams are very similar. They got a great they have a great closer too. Chuck Sanchez, what's up, Tom Grandin? What's up? Good morning, Kate Cod. How about you, Chuck? Enjoy it, man. All right, y'all. Let's go do it for us. Shout out to Brock, Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic. Let's go say bye to Drew, and then we will bid you adieu. Tomorrow we will have locked on. Uh, it's tomorrow morning, Scone. To recap, I'm going to try to get you a locked on uh, later today to preview the Supers. Hey, bud. Hey, bud. Hey, can you say bye to Dad show? We are going to go to gymnastics, but can you say bye to Dad show? Say bye, Dad show, so we can get dressed and go to gymnastics. Oh, excuse me. Crossing your leg like that. There's bug bites on his legs. Hmm. Hey, can we say bye, Dad show? Can you blow him a kiss? All right, thank you. That was very sweet. All right, see you all later. Have a great day.